Good day. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast with the big picture technical update for the NASDAQ 100 being recorded on Saturday, April the 6th, 2024. I'm going to start here on the cash market, the NDX. Uh, it was an interesting week and kind of as expected, but not necessarily fully. Uh, the market did bounce off of Thursday's sharp decline in the NASDAQ and bounced back over what I would have been looking for. and But I continue to uh, measure the market having completed the primary B wave. And that would have been at, I had moved it, so it is at the highs reached on the 20th of March. So beginning here on the four hour chart for the NDX, uh, we can see that we have the intermediate A, intermediate B, and then now in place intermediate wave C within that minor wave one, two, three, four, and the minor wave five. Let's just open it up and start by looking at this minor fifth wave. Originally, and basically is right now the alternate view, and I'll get into that in just a moment, that <clears throat> the originally I had the third wave here and then the fourth wave done here with this now moving up as to start the uh, uh, minute fifth wave up. Now, Thursday's downturn produced extremely a negative candle and actually... Not that it couldn't, because it would have remained within a uh, diagonal triangle higher, but it broke that boundary substantially, even though it took it back. It broke that substantially, broke below 18,000 pretty much substantially. Uh, and although it was recovered, now still can move higher and that would throw over the the count back to that we're still within that minute fifth wave if not how i'm viewing this right now as ugly as it is full of gaps and everything else on basis the cash is that i'm looking at that five five so it's minute minor five intermediate c primary wave b we're starting down so within this primary C wave, which is just beginning, it's going to consist of five waves of intermediate degree. Those will be labeled in the yellow, and that'll be it'll be a five wave decline. So within that first wave of intermediate degree, there are going to be five waves of minor degree. Within that first minor wave, one down, and we're going to have five waves of minute degree. And then within that first minute degree, first wave, there will be five waves of minuet degree. And that's where I'm starting my count. So I have minuet wave one and two, and then it breaks down. And then to sub minuet wave one and two. So I've got a one, two and a one, two. Now that may flip up one degree. This could be minute one, minute two, minuet one, minuet two. I'm not doing that just yet. We're going to see how it all plays out. Now, with this count, I would not, I would be expecting that we're going to move lower, if not gap lower, pretty much from the start of Globex tomorrow, or basis the cash index on Monday. So I feel that if we continue to move higher and we gap higher on Monday morning, that's going to put a very strong emphasis on that, what I would now use as my alternate count being that this minute fifth wave is still in progress the fourth wave having completed at that break below the trend line on thursday so if that is the case now what i'm going to do is we're just going to put just some fibs in place and we're going to go right over to there. This would be for minute wave five as it relates to minute wave one. 618, not quite high enough. So let me just kind of say it could provide some resistance, 
but I would not be expecting it to finish the move, although it could. So that's 18,434, 435. We've already been above that because we've been above as high as 18,464. So that would be coming in just below. And again, if we get the five waves, right? So this would be, if this is four, it's going to be one, two. I would expect it to go easily above there. Where wave five then, minute five, again, if this is minute four, so the alternate would be, and minute five is in action, the 100% marker is 18,779 or 18,780. That would be the area, and then we'd be back up at the top of the trend line, and it would fit. Now, what the market needs to do in order to give us that clue that it's going to happen is that it really must. And in my view, we need a gap higher and for it to just then keep going, similar to what we had here. So in other words, they build on that rally. Whatever reason they want to give to that rally happening, they're going to have to build on it. Now, that might be the case. We might see everybody come pouring back in on Monday. Again, you know, second week of April. So what do we get then? We get where it's like we get more of that 401k money. We get more of the moving into the ETFs. We get more of all that good stuff. And now we're getting ready for earnings season. So there's all kinds of things that could happen. But that would be my take if indeed the market is going to continue to move higher so we don't get the gap up or gap down we get a gap up and it continues to climb of course a break above 18,464 would put a pretty much seal the deal that we are now heading up to finish minute wave five and then again the minor five and this and that so if anything i was like a week early let's say uh but there are other things that are kind of, and I'm going to go into those as well, on a cyclical basis, so a basis of the cycles, that are kind of suggesting that that's not going to be the case. So I'll go over that in just a moment. Now, I'm going to take this off. And we're now we're going to build as if those are in place and we start to move lower. Right from the get-go on Monday for the cash market for the future tomorrow. So... We're going to now put some fibs that'll give us some clues. Oops, that's not right. I keep doing that one wrong. So we'll get some clues as to what might we see if the market then turns and continues to move lower. So these would come off because they would be done as well. So let me just get rid of all the distraction on our chart. And we're going to start to look at for downside. And... Um, before I begin, let me just move out to my weekly chart and show you that I have what are the indications for what right? we have A, B, and now we're looking for the C wave. So the low of 2022, I would expect to be taken out. This is pretty large. And so the 100% doesn't really cut it. And neither does this guy. Where's that high? See, okay. So let me make an adjustment to that. I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to go from here to here to, oh, come on. And then up to this high. And let me just go over there and fix that. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm going to go here here and I've got to bring this high over so we go from there and we bring it back over to here now so now go back out to that weekly picture and you can see that we have still I'm looking for it that that it should come below 10,463 but that's basis. I think at the time, since this is October of 2022, it's either basis the October contract or the December contract of 2022. Now, of course, there's a higher levels as our contracts continue to roll forward, but it'll all work out. So 100% is 12,000. I'd be looking for it to come below there 
1.618 coming down is 82. I believe that it's likely going to come in just sub 10,000, just sub. I think I have some letter, some numbers that are closer like it to 90, 96, 95 in the NASDAQ. Right now, the NASDAQ is the weaker, the weaker of the two. So the SPX or the, or the NDX, NDX is weaker. So back out here to the four hour chart, I'm gonna open that back up. I'm gonna leave that in. Now let's just kind of go over these, right? And we got one more to add because now we're looking for this minuet third wave, 1.618, 17,614, hmm, not bad. But if we're inside this minuet third wave and we see that wave one was pretty huge, wave two, we're likely not going to stop there if we're looking for that continued. So let me add the next level. Date. Keep doing that wrong. I need to start it from here and go down to there and then back up to here. And it's going to put it over on this side. Let me do that again. This is not working out how I want it to. I'm going to go from here to here. Come on. Yeah, there we got it. Now we got it right. Okay, so we can see that the so my new third wave, 100% is 17,712. I would like it to be longer than the first wave. That puts us right down there. And that would just be the internal three of three. So maybe that's where we come down just to complete this internal. We do a four and a five, and then we're going to be looking at this for the minuet. So in other words, what I'm really thinking that could happen is the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ continues to be the weakest link between the S&P and the NASDAQ. And we start to see some continuation in terms of markets or, or uh, individual component stocks being hit, i.e. Tesla, Apple. Uh, we start to see uh, NVIDIA weaken a little bit, starting to come off. They did a perform stellar performance on uh, Friday for the expiration. Let's see if that does remove a lot of things and opens the door for the market to kind of make some additional adjustments. So we'll be looking at least for the market to likely now. What's going to be our clue as the market gaps lower. So moving averages, looking at it, the four hour chart, they're all sitting right here and flat as a pancake. We got the 13, we got the 20, and we got the 50 all wrapped right around that level. And here, 18,116-ish 18, to 18,140. That's where they're all sitting. So that it has to get through and then continue if the alternate count comes into play, which is nothing more than just a continuation of what we just gave up. So those are the downside. That's the upside. This is the cash market. Let me go over very quickly what we have in terms of economic data for next week. On Monday, nothing. On Tuesday, the NFIB Optimism Index comes out at 6 a.m. Eastern. Not sure what that may or may not do. The two days that we're really going to be looking to see how the market wants to interpret it is going to be Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, we get the CPI, and we also get wholesale inventories, plus one, two, three, three uh, governors and Fed presidents out. No, actually two, excuse me. Uh, one governor, one president out speaking. We have so wholesale inventories at 10 a.m. Eastern. And the minutes of the Fed March FOMC meeting come out at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's Wednesday, April the 10th. On Thursday, April the 11th, we have initial jobless claims plus producer price index. So Tuesday, excuse me, Wednesday, we have CPI. Thursday, we have PPI plus initial jobless claims, producer price index. And then we have one, two, three, four Fed presidents out all on the stump. Friday, import price index and consumer sentiment, plus a couple of Fred presidents, again, out speaking. So that trend is now continuing where they've got all the Fed governors and the Fed presidents out speaking at various locations around the country and also probably around the world to bolster their case that they have inflation under control and filling in the gap about that big question that everybody wants answered. When are you going to cut? When are you going to cut? 
So that was a part of Thursday from what I read is that, you know, we have some of these Fed uh, officials out stumping that, that, well, maybe we won't. So let's, let's just backtrack one moment that initially the market was like, mm, Fed's going to cut starting in March. Well, that's come and gone. It's not March. Then it got moved to June. That's come and gone. Likely not going to be June. So what happens? We get two disappointing down, down. Then part of the conversation that I read that happened on Thursday was that we had, a, again, we had a bunch of Fed officials out speaking, and I guess they get asked, or they were just reporting that possibly we might get a, a rate cut, maybe it comes in the fourth quarter. Then it was, well, maybe in December. Then it was, well, maybe not at all in 2024. We won't get any cuts in 24. We'll be looking to 2025. And that's what they are saying, participated in really giving that quick to the downside into gear. Now, of course, there was also a lot to do with Thursday's expiration, Friday's expiration in anticipation thereof. Also coming in, so you had a lot of gamma, you had a lot of just uh, movement and some release of a compressed volatility market. And uh, again, there's a really great video that's been put out uh, by the CEO of Spot Gamma. First name is Brent. It is really extremely very, very good. And the title of it is Volatility Suppression, Quantifying the Oddities of Recent Market Movement. It's very, very technical. And it does a, it speaks a lot about, uh, about gamma, about volatility, and about uh, graphs, a lot of chart work, a lot of work. And but if you can follow it, and I would suggest if you really can't go watch it several times because you want to pick up what is being said, and it's very technical, but so is the market. So I find it to be a really good video to kind of get in and really try to understand. It puts a lot of insight to what we see happening and really what how should we interpret it. So again. Let's go over and take a look at now at the futures market. Again, leaving the the uh, cash, what we're looking for in the cash, it's going to be pretty much the same thing in that future. But we're kind of looking for that same deal. Oh, before I do that, before I get there, uh, sorry, let me go right back over because I'm going to update the cycles as it relates to the cash. Uh, let me go back to there so you're going to be able to see what I'm talking about. And over here, we're going to be looking at, so here's the things to really take to heart. The, the technical evidence for the NDX on a short-term directional bias, it does remain slightly bearish right now, okay? So the NASDAQ basis, the NDX, continues to be the weak link and be weaker than the S&P 500. So what we saw on Thursday, it was a meaningful reversal, which there was enough evidence to start to suggest that, that the intermediate and the daily cycle, those peaks have occurred. I was talking about them last week. Now we're getting more. They're starting to show, yep, they, they could have peaked. So what we're looking for now that on Thursday, the NDX, the cash market, didn't meet the, the criteria that would suggest that those peaks have occurred. And so now to reverse that, to change that thought process and change what the market is doing, the NDX would, again, when we're talking about gap up, the NDX would have to gap and keep pushing higher which takes us back above a, a minor resistance zone, which is 18,169 to 18,338. So those would be important levels to watch on the upside. Now, on Friday, excuse me, on Thursday, the fact that the market broke to the downside, NDX, 17,907, kind of gave a good warning of a negative shift in the daily cycle. So here's the deal. For the upside, 
The index needs to push above minor resistance at 18,169 to 18,338. So for the downside, the market now needs to close below 18,122. And then there's some minor fibs. And now my, all this cycle work is from uh, Steve Miller. And you can always catch his stuff from askslim.com. I'm going to give that because these are great levels. And I've always admired and respected uh, Slimmy's cycle work. So I'm just kind of going to give credit where credit is due. And that is these are his work. So please understand what he is now selling us is that on, on the daily cycle view, the cycle patterns have on a minor level negative. They're giving warnings on the primary level. They're giving a negative warning. So we've got some things changing. And so the, the NASDAQ could be leading the way, tipping everything over and driving us into that primary C wave coming down. All right, let's go over and take a look at the NQ. Now, what do we got going on? Same deal. As you can see, it's all above there. Leaving the five here, which, by the way, I know it didn't get up to that high, but it still was a new high over here, over this level. And that's all that really kind of matters for right now. So four and the five. Now, ugly, I don't like it, but that's what actually happened. So I could either put the one here, which would have been on the second, which coincides with... Uh, the cash market, or I could actually put it here, which when I take this and move it down to just a line chart, also from the third though, but you can see it's a cleaner one, two, three, four, five. So it would be wave one. And this all works out to be ugly, but usable. Markets have tend to do strange things. So if I'm saying one, two, one, two. Now, with that being the case, we can start to build and take a look at what we're thinking in terms of the downside. So one thing we're going to be looking at is we're going to go here to here. And then we have one more. So we're going to go from here to here. So same deal. And now what we're really kind of looking at is for the minuet third wave. We're inside. So wave one, gigantic on, the, on that uh, minuet wave three. They're very typical. So in that being the case, we're going to be looking for the sub-minuet third wave. 100%, 17,906. Okay. I want a little bit more. That brings us down to its 1.618, but I think anywhere in between could do the ticket, could do could do the deed. So below 17,906, uh, but possibly as low as 17,731. Now, if it comes in below, we do a four and then bring a five down, then we're doing the completion point for the uh, minuet three, which is 1.618 at 17,731 then its next drop is much steeper. And that would really also could be in line if we start to get another decline we, we saw on Thursday coming to play tomorrow. I mean, excuse me, on Monday. Now that can happen simply because we've got this built up coming in. There's also a lot going on in the geopolitical front. And and again, I I have continued to say, and now, I'm hearing from you know the, the gentleman at Spot Gamma also basically saying that you know, the geopolitical sphere is likely pr to produce what's going to bust open any suppression of volatility. That volatility will spike. Volatility will just kind of break out of that whatever's going on and just spike. But it's likely going to be triggered by a geopolitical situation versus a market situation. The market doesn't seem to really kind of be, or at least on a volatility basis, not too really concerned about 
uh, a volatility spike due to, unless interest rates go up, but they figure interest rates, yeah, they're going to probably stay the same. Market is okay with interest rates hanging out at five, five and a quarter, five and a half. So we're living with that, no problem. Moving forward, they're not mentioning that they're really going to go up. They're just not saying when they're going to start lowering the rate. So, and then there's a whole correlation between uh, bonds and the market and how what what's going on there that if they're really looking at rates being cut then why are the bond markets declining which kind of effectively pushes the rates higher so a lot of cross currents and cross conflicts going on so again a lot of that could be pointing to a uh, geopolitical event um, getting ready to happen. And that would be a surprise. And that would be a surprise to the market and really shove things back down and cause a spike lower versus a spike higher. So here I am thinking, you know, we we should, from the level where we closed on Friday, we should not gap above that level. If the market gaps above that level come tomorrow, when Globex reopens, it's going to really point towards the alternate, which I showed you. Now, let me take these levels off and put the others on, which are going to give just the upside without changing the count. But it would be that the four is here, and this is one, two, and we launch up in the third to finish this whole move. Now, what is that gonna look like? And so let's go back and start and look at this. That wave one was pretty big, so we could really get the move, right? First move, nah, 18,611, and leave it up there because it's like it presents some resistance, but we need to get above there. Now, if indeed minute wave five is in the beginning stages, where can it go? Well, there's 100%. Wave five would be equal to wave one at 18,955. And that certainly would put us right towards the top of that diagonal. And in which case, either the four goes there, right? Because I can't really move it anywhere else. I can't really call this, you know, this is in, in yeah, A of five, B of five, I know we're running in a C of five. Maybe, maybe, maybe as an alternate in the in, in the futures market, as an alternate. A of, A of five, ugly, but usable. B of five, and now we're working on the C wave up. All C waves must be five. So there's that. That would be how I would view anything outside if the market decided to gap higher. And it could, and it could. There is nothing that I put past the ability of this market, particularly the NASDAQ to do. You know, they, you have to understand it's like dealers and traders and option traders within NVIDIA and a lot of the individual stocks, they're not looking at a bigger picture in the index. They're just looking at that stock. They're looking at price. They're looking at premium and putting on positions, period. That's it. And all of them might be directional. But big plays come out of NVIDIA. Big plays come out of Meta. Big plays come out of all of those stocks. And they all have an effect. All right. So I am not going to really walk through too much more than that. I am going to take this one off. But you can see that would be the target. If the market gaps higher versus gap lower. If we gap lower and we start to break below, those lows below 18,000, then we're going to be pretty much looking for that to continue lower as I just laid out. All right, so laid out all the goodies and uh, give the title of that video. It's YouTube, well worth a look. The next update will be the Elliott Wave update on Monday, April the 8th.